Greetings and welcome to today's broadcast for Kingdom's Teachings. I'm Sheila Mills and we are going to do a very exciting uh, Bible study today um, entitled Returning to a Father's Welcome. We started with part one of this message in our last program where we're studying out of the book of Luke chapter 15 and we're looking at the parable of the prodigal son which represents for us the situation where um, either you have a person who is a sinner and does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ and they are in a place of distance from God in a foreign place outside of the arc of safety and salvation of their relationship with Jesus Christ or you could be someone who's watching today's program and you are a believer and a child of God. It's just that you have decided to kind of take things in your own hands and you find yourself in a place where you feel like you're not in the will of God. So as we continue part two of a message, returning to a father's welcome, let us start in prayer. Father, thank you for your word, and we pray that your word will just go out and it will minister to us in a spirit of truth, love, and grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. On last week's broadcast, we talked about the prodigal son um, that Jesus used as a parable which showed the son who decided that he would demand his inheritance from his father and that he would go to a foreign country. And within a few days, he found himself broke and his inheritance had been um, eliminated and he found himself, instead of being in a place of royalty in his father's house, he found himself being hired as a person who would feed the hogs that belonged to another man and also found himself eating with the hogs. And so on today's program, we want to look a little bit more about um, the son's, um, what happened when he found himself in that place of dishonor and eating with the hogs instead of in the comfort of his father's home. So on today's broadcast, um, there came a point where the son, it says in the word where he came to himself when he realized who he was, who he belonged to, that his father had a house <laughs> that he felt like he could return to. The problem with this is that he didn't know how to return. He didn't know how the father would receive him upon his return since he was the one who insisted on leaving the father's house in the first place. So when we look at this parable where the son finds himself saying that I know I need to return to my father. I just don't know how to get back and I don't know how I'm going to be received as a parallel for how we feel when we've been called to repentance, to confess our sins before God and to be reconciled with him from a place of disobedience to a place of obedience. So one good thing about the son is he knew his way back home. So he might've been a little concerned about how the father was going to receive him when he came back home, but he knew how to get back home. And so in our application of this, the word of God and his grace is our pathway back home when we find ourselves in a place of distance from God. And so I want us to start today with just looking at um, what happened when the son decided to make the journey back home to his father and what he could expect. So on today's program, we're gonna focus on how the father welcomed the son back home once the son came to himself, repented and decided, no matter what, I'm gonna take this journey back home. In our background scripture for today in Luke chapter 15, verse 20 through 24, Jesus tells us of the father's love and the joy in the return of his son. So while the son was very worried about how he would be received by the father, today's lesson is gonna tell us that the son, and just like we sometimes, worry about the wrong thing. We don't need to worry about how God is going to receive us back. We need to just do our part in repentance and return to the father. Luke 15, 10 tells us, even so I tell you, there's joy among and in the presence of angels of God over one especially wicked person who repents, who changes his mind for the better, heartily amending his ways with abhorrence of his past sins. So 
this is telling us again that as we spoke last week, God is concerned just about that one. Every single soul is important to God. No matter how many millions of people are in the body of Christ today, every one lost soul is important to God. And because Jesus came to save that which was lost, he came to save the lost souls. And so he's still wanting everyone that the Father put in his hands and sent him to save Jesus is saying, just one more, just one more, come to me and be saved. So in Luke 15, 17 through 19, where we find the son coming to himself, it says that when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have enough food and even food to spare, but I am perishing, I am dying here of hunger. So not only does he realize that Okay, I'm not supposed to be in this place of lack and need that I'm at. But he's like, okay, even my father's servants, not his other son, are doing better than I'm doing. So the prodigal son had enough sense to know what his inheritance would have been and that his place as son supersede the place of the servants that was in his father's house. And if the father was taking care of the servants, certainly the father would take care of him. So he executes his decision. He doesn't just sit around and go, well, it might be nice if I go back to the father's house and this is what I can expect. He makes a decision of his will to return to the father. Because in verse 20, it says, so he got up and came to his own father. He didn't delay and say, I think I'm gonna process this a while. When he came to himself, to his right mind, <laughs> he got up and he went to his father. And so this has applications for us today because sometimes we will procrastinate our returning to God or seeking his face um, for wisdom or for guidance or to repent from something that we know we need to repent from. Today is the day of salvation, the word tells us. So I don't want you to put off for a convenient season, finding yourself back to that place that your Father God has awaiting to receive you. So let today be the day. If you don't know Jesus Christ, get up, confess your sins, ask for forgiveness, repent, and go back and be received to the Father who's waiting for you. So one of the um, important steps that we can take um, is to just return. In Joel 2.12, it tells us, Therefore also now says the Lord, turn and keep on coming to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning until every hindrance is removed and the broken fellowship is restored. I love those words because God is saying, come and keep on coming. And so whether you're coming as a, a point of restoration or whether you're coming as the first time person as accepting Jesus Christ as your savior, He's like, just keep coming, just keep coming, keep putting one foot in front of the other. I'm here, I see you, I see you're coming, but I need you to make the decision that you are going to return unto me. So in this journey of the son, where did it begin? It began with repentance because he says, I will get up in Luke 15, 18 through 19. He says, I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me like one of your hired servants. So in the son's return to the father, in his mind, he did not deserve to return to his rightful place as a son. He was like, if I can just get back in the house, I will take any place, any position. I'll be a servant because he already knew that the servants were being fed well, they were being well taken care of. And so even being a servant in his father's house was a good place to be. And isn't that so like our God today? Sometimes we are looking for um, certain positions in the, in the kingdom of God, or we feel like we have to be in this high place. And God is saying that, I just want you to be willing to be a servant to me. I will promote you, I will exalt you to the place in the time, 
in the position in accordance with my will and my purpose for your life. You don't get to just pick out the title and the position and the place. It is all in accordance with God's will. So I want us for today to look at a welcoming father's response to his repentant son. Because in Luke 15, verses 21 through 24, it talks about what the father did to welcome the father home. And it is an application of how our father God welcomes us back in our spirits of repentance and when we make mistakes and when we are feeling distance from him and wanting to return. Again, the two words that's critical to our lesson today is grace, God's unmerited favor, and repentance, which means we have a change of mind and purpose and life to which the cancellation and the penalty of sin, the death of sin is forgiven to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. So God's grace covers our repentance. It is the pathway. Repentance is the pathway in which we access God's grace through Jesus Christ. So let's look at verse 20. It says, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity and tenderness for him. And he ran and embraced and kissed him fervently. Notice the father did not stay home and wait for the son to come to him. When the father spotted the son in this parable that Jesus is, is using to illustrate his love for us as a father, he ran to meet the, and met the son where he was. And that's important because God meets us where we are. He doesn't require us to have it all together to even know the every exact step that we have to take to return. He hears the cry of our repentant spirit even before we utter the words while we are still at a distance from him in a place that he had no will and purpose for us to be in, in a place where we may feel like I'm such a big sinner, like these sinners that see this parable that there's no place for me in God. God is saying to you and I today that I will meet you where you are. I just need to know that you want to come. That's all I need to know, that you will to come and to return to the Father, and I will come and get you. When we return to God and in his faithfulness to receive us, he offers us so much more than we could ever imagine that we would receive from him. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just to his own nature and promises, and he will forgive our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, which is everything that's not in the conformity to his will and purpose, thought, and action. The Father <laughs> welcomes us through his son, Jesus Christ, and he says, I'm wiping the slate clean when you return to me. I want us to look how this father's loving welcome of his son in this parable parallels to how our Father God receives us into restoration with him or into relationship with him unto salvation. And when I was looking through the um, Matthew Henry's concise commentary, I found this parallel between the parable of the prodigal son and how God loves us. And I want to share that with you today. When the father saw the prodigal son at a distance far away, he ran, the word says he ran to meet him. And the Matthew Henry Concise um, commentary puts it this way. This shows the feet of mercy. When the father ran to meet the son, this denotes how swift God is to show mercy to us. The prodigal son returned home with his head hung down and in a um, spirit of shame because he didn't know how he would be received by the father. But the tender father, which represents the tender Father God in our lives, ran out to meet him. He extended his arms of mercies and he greeted him with a kiss. And think about the holy kiss that Jesus gives us when we return into him. 
how swift his mercy runs out to meet us when we return to him, when we ask for forgiveness of sins, when we ask to be returned to that rightful place as a joint heir with Jesus Christ. That is our inheritance as children in the kingdom of God to be a joint heir with Jesus Christ. The son came home from a hog pen. So you know the prodigal son had to be dirty and smelly. That did not stop Jesus from illustrating in this parable that the father ran to meet him and greeted him with a kiss and an embrace. So today, you may think that you have blown it or we've made so, or I may think that I've made such a big mistake that I don't smell too good, I don't look too good in God's eyes that there's a stench there of my sins, that God would not dare come near. I am telling you today that God's word assures us, no matter the stench of the sins that you and I may have committed, no matter the stench or the filth that we think we've gotten ourselves into, God sees beyond that. And the fragrance of his love, the fragrance of his mercy and grace is what embraces us and draws us close unto himself. The other thing that the Father does that's found in the scriptures, found in verse 22 through 24, he prepares a feast. The Father tells the other servant, my son has returned home. Make a feast and let's be merry. We are going to have a party. We're going to celebrate the return of my son who I thought was dead because he didn't have any contact with the son in this parable, or at least the word doesn't say that. So in verse 22 through 24, it says, but the father said to his bond servant, bring quickly the best robe, the festive robe of honor and put it on him and give him a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet and bring out that wheat, the fattened calf, and kill it, and let us revel and feast and be happy and make merry. Because my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to revel and feast and make merry. Jesus stands waiting to receive every repentant sinner, every repentant believer, the same way that Jesus demonstrated that in this prodigal, in this um, parable, that he is having, he is preparing a feast to receive us back unto his own. And he clothes us in his righteousness. In the parable, Jesus talks about the father preparing a robe of honor for the prodigal son. Our robe of honor today is Jesus Christ and his grace and his loving mercy that he clothes us in because guess what? We were made in his image and he prepares us to look just like him. When God sees us, he sees us through the eyes of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is of honor, so God sees us as a person of honor. Jesus is righteousness, so God sees us as a person of righteousness. Jesus is holy, so God sees us as a person that is holy, that has been perfected, by his grace and his love. So today, if, as you're finding yourself in different places in life, and you're finding yourself in a place where you feel like you may be distanced from God, God is saying, I have a robe of righteousness, I have a robe of honor that I long to clothe you in. I long to greet you swiftly with my feet of mercy and to embrace you with my arms of love. So what are we waiting on? What is it that the enemy has convinced us that we have done so badly that God could not possibly forgive us of the wrong that we've done? What is it that we've done where we feel like, you know, God has been so good to me and here I am, I've let him down again. You are not a let down to God. You are not a failure to God. God sees you through the eyes of grace and the eyes of his mercy and his love. And he simply stands to say, just come back to the Father's house. I welcome you back to the Father's house so that I can just redress you in honor. You don't have to hide like Adam and Eve in nakedness. <laughs> you can come back to the Father's house today and be received in his loving grace. 
So let's look at some of the things that the prodigal son received in terms of his returning, and these are the promises that God had for us today. First, he received in verse 20, unconditional love and acceptance. Before he could say anything to the father about, I'm sorry that I blew my inheritance, I'm sorry that I disrespected um, you as my father, the father ran to meet him and gave him love and unconditional acceptance. In verse 22 through 23, he received more than what he had expected. The son was willing to accept the fact that he could just be a servant in his father's household. But the father's like, that's not good enough for you. I am restoring you to the place of honor that you had before you left my house. And that's what God is saying to us today. Yes, I need you to have a servant spirit when it comes to um, being humble and being submitted and yielded to me as God as your heavenly father, as the person who is sovereign in your life, but you are a joint heir with my son, Jesus Christ, and I will robe you in the same honor, in the same righteousness, in the same love that I did my son when he returned home to me after completing the work that I sent him on the earth to do. Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, even I, am he who plots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I remember your sins no more. God is not sitting around going, okay, I think I'm going to remember everything. Once I welcome you back, I'm not going to let you forget what you've done while you were gone. No, when we return to God, he blots out our iniquities and he remembers them no more. What is our part in this? to return to the Father, to return to the Father, and he will do the rest. He greets us where he finds us. In verse 24, where it talks about the feast of the return, God does for those who return to their duty and cast themselves upon his mercy abundantly above what they may ask, think, or imagine. The prodigal son returned home with a spirit of fear and shame and filth not knowing how he would be received back by the father. But the father runs out to him and say, my son has come home. And he didn't keep it to himself. He shared it with the servants and everybody else that would listen in this parable because it says that he said to the servant, his servants, go and get the robe of honor. Go and prepare a feast. My son is back home. And this is just so wonderful that when we come back to God when we're restored. It's not some secret that we should keep. We should have a feast. We should have a party. We should be a witness to let everyone know of the great love and mercy for which the Father has welcomed you back home and welcomed you into restoration. In Luke 15, 28, um, I titled this, It's a Family Affair, because not only did the father give instructions to his servant as to preparing the feast because the son had came back home, he also went to um, the son who had stayed home originally because there were two sons to join them in the celebration of his brother's return. In Luke 15, 32, it says, but it was fitting to make merry and to revel in feast and rejoice for this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. You know, the brother who stayed home wasn't so happy about all the celebrating of the brother who left <laughs> um, with his inheritance and blew what the father had given to him. So he was not feeling the same love and the joy that the father had towards the son who had returned. And today, if we're not careful, we may find ourselves in a place of being judgmental of those who have gone and put themselves in a place of distance from God. And when they come back, because God has drawn them back and God has fully received them, we have to be very careful that we don't play God in terms of the restoration process for which someone comes back into fellowship with God. God's word is very clear that he himself will forgive us of our sins, he will plot out our transgressions, and he will remember them no more. 
So I wanna encourage you today that if you found yourself in a place of distance, if you found yourself in a place where you're trying to figure out how you even got there, go to God first. <laughs> go to God first, because you're going to have to be very comfortable and very sure, not just comfortable, you're going to have to know in faith that God has received you back, no matter what man may say to you, no matter what formless man may try to apply to you. I am telling you, the word of God says, by his grace and his mercy, he welcomes you back with a father's welcome. So I'm sure as we've gone through life, each of us have found ourselves in the place where this prodigal son um, has found, found himself in this parable that Jesus was demonstrating to us. And so when we look at this, we can say, but for the grace of God, it could have been me in that place of being out of place from God's will and the place that he had promised me. You know, we have so much to be thankful for, that we serve a loving God, that we serve a God who loves us despite anything that we could ever do, say, or even think, that he stands ready to receive us back. And who would not serve a God like that? Who would not want to be restored and reconciled to a God where you could do no wrong that he would not receive you back into himself. Today's message and um, part one of this message, returning to a father's welcome, is a message of hope. It is a message that no matter what, there is no distance that can separate you from the love of God and from the grace of God. And so I pray that as you've listened to um, part one and part two of this message that you will have hope. You will have the expectations that God is faithful, that he loves you, and that he will receive you back home with open arms, with his feet of mercy and grace to say, welcome back. I've been awaiting you. So as we have tried to share with you the truth of God's word, I pray that you will continue to join us for the broadcast here at Kingdom's Teachings so that we will continue to study about the love, the grace, and the mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us for today's program, and we will see you next time here at Kingdom Teachings.